Hi everyone, thanks for joining me on, on all of us on this lovely Friday afternoon. Uh, really appreciate you being here. And so I have a nice program planned for you today, starting with a couple of, I guess, announcements and a little sharing. And uh, then um, I'll get right into a demo. My demo today, I'm planning on doing a little progression in a way. I'm gonna start with, a. am gonna try to do three quick versions of the reference photo, starting with a more representational or realistic version and move, kind of march toward a more abstracted version. So we'll see how that goes. I hope it works out. But before I get started, I do want to talk a little bit about Spruce Blue. And so nice of Dakota Pastel. They have put together a page. I'm not sure it's live yet, but um, it, it eventually will be. They have put together some comparisons or some alternatives to Spruce Blue for us, which is really amazing. And so, Without further ado, I'm, and just so you know, um, very shortly I will put together a little mini lesson uh, that you'll have access to on my website so you can kind of see, and I'll talk about how I feel about the different um, alternatives that they have offered. But starting with, so I put this little, little uh, display up, and this one, no surprise, this one, this first one, is Spruce Blue, New Pastel. And you can see, I, I just love this. I love the, the richness of it, the darkness of it. I also definitely love the feel of the New Pastel and that it's a square stick. So this is the New Pastel. It's a square stick, and I love the way it goes down, everything about it. So this one is art spectrum and so you can see it's got a different kind of feel to it it's a little bit softer uh, so it's not quite the same and it's a round stick so another alternative that they put forth is this one which is a Giro I don't think it's very close um, but I do like the feel of the Giro stick and then finally, down here, this, oh, I'm sorry, this, this one. This one is one that I, they, they did not put this up there. This is a, a Terry Ludwig. And I think that one's pretty close color-wise. It's not quite as green, but it's, I like this better than um, the Rembrandt. This is Rembrandt. And I don't think that's very close color-wise. So I will, I'll be doing a little, again, a little mini lesson I'll put together to um, talk about these differences and what I think about it. All right, so that's coming. And, you know, I remember when Wallace paper kind of... Um, went away when that happened. So we can't get married to anything. We have to stay, stay open to different alternatives. All right, now, exciting thing I wanna share now is a couple little very, very quick videos of head, uh, I'm, gonna call, I'm gonna call them paintings. Uh, and I've done these on Procreate. And Procreate lets you do a little sped up video. So without further ado, I'll show you these. There they go, first one. Now, the reference photos, well, I'll let them play, so, and then I'll talk about them a little bit. So they're kind of fun. I've been doing these a lot lately. I started by doing just head drawings, just line sketches, and then I've been moving on to doing these other ones.
super cool. Okay, all right. Again, these are done in the program called Procreate on my iPad Pro with this stylus. And um, what else do I wanna say about them? The cool thing about doing the head painting with these is you can use a color picker. So it kind of streamlines that choosing skin tones for you. Because if you have your reference photo right there like I did, you can use a color picker and it helps you decide on, on, the, on the palette to use. And the, it's a very powerful program that has a huge range of different kinds of brushes and pencils that you can use. And the other really cool feature about doing something like that on Procreate, it lets you go back. So if you, if you put down something that you don't like, you just press the little, you know, rewind thing and you can uh, eliminate that or you can erase, so e either ways. All right, that's a neato thing. And then I want to just remind you guys that today and tomorrow, the last two days of our sale on our monthly flagship product. Um, and we'll be coming out with year four of monthly pastel painting lessons online on July 1. So in the meantime, we're running a little sale for new members, new members only. But it's, so it's a really great time to get really familiar with the three years of content and have a front row seat for when year four gets released. And the subscription works like this. You can pay either monthly or annually. And you, if, you have, uh, if you pay annually a one-time payment, you get access to all 36 sessions right away, which includes over 200 videos, 36 study guides, and uh, also subscribers get $15 off all of our standalone workshops as long as you're an active member. You get instant access to the bonus session when you sign up. And each session focuses in on a topic or a fundamental of painting, includes several videos and a step-by-step -step study guide. And so, so you get hundreds of pages of study guides. So this, this, is the, these, this is the study guides for year one. It's a lot of stuff. So... Um, yeah, it's, uh, I'm really, really proud of it. And there's a lot of detailed stuff, like this talks about plein air painting, getting consistent lighting on your easel. So there's a ton of information in just year one. And so there's year two and three, and pretty soon we're gonna have year four, and we're really excited about releasing year four. And with the membership, you get access to the SuperStream lessons, and which we're gonna do one right after this. So if you're a member, you can stay tuned today and watch the super stream. And the super streams go way above and beyond what I do for the free live stream lessons where I really dig into something foundational, do a demo, and we also do critiques during the super streams. You get access to the mileage trainings that we do and um, what else, what else? Oh, the Facebook group, which is a really lovely, wonderful, supportive community that we've really built. It's really, I'm really proud of it. I'm proud of all the, the people that contribute to the Facebook group, if you're a Facebook person. Um, so it's really, really a wonderful, n nice, nice community. And, and I try to get in there as much as I can. I try to get in there every day and make, make some comments. Um, I don't always make it, but most, most days I do. Okay, that, that is it for that stuff. Moving on to today's demo, which I'm also really excited about. Let me put this where I don't lose it. It's super easy to lose that pen. Okay. All right. All right, so I'm gonna move this over a little bit. Right here, is that? A little bit more? Yeah, that was good. Okay. Right. All right. Get myself out of the way, huh? We 
We finally have some, the sun, we lost the sun today, but we've, we've got big white puffy clouds and blue sky here today. It's starting to warm up and the garden is starting to just get so exciting. Okay, so we have this lovely spring scene that we're gonna be painting today, uh, or at least using as a starting point. And oh boy, I need, um, I need a hairband. Let me get, I'll go grab one. Okay. All right. And I do, I do this not because for me, it's for you guys so you can see a little bit better. All right, so I'm gonna to try to avoid that spruce blue, even though I really want, I really, really want it today. Let me see if I can stick with that, uh, the art spectrum stick. I have to wean myself away from it. And um, I'm sure some of you too, because I've gotten a lot of you guys hooked on the spruce blue. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the wrapper off of this art spectrum stick, if I can get it off. There it comes. And up, oh, it just went in half, that's fine. That's good enough. Okay, so I'm gonna do these kind of small. See, it's just not quite as hard. It's a little, it's a little different. So even though I'm starting out a little bit more representation, still, I'm still gonna keep it pretty loose and um, playful. I'm not gonna worry about the car today. That might be something I would like, uh, depending on what I was doing. There's the little vegetation over here. Um, maybe, maybe some kind of indication of the side of the road and the, um, and here, here, this pathway down here. And the branch coming in the front. This is, that, this is the branch that's coming in front here of the house. And the peak of the, of the roof here. Get, get that angle right here, angle, a little dark. And then the roof here. Some, there's some windows, so just just a little bit. There's some other trees over in here. But so real, still still loose and quick, and there's the end of the path here, or the the sidewalk, I should say. This here's the there's a little grassy area here. All right, that's enough. There's fence, all kinds of stuff going on. All right, good. Okay, now, now what? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna hold the questions on the demo to the end. Um, and mm, Color, color, color. I'm, I'm gonna, what am I going to do color wise? I'm going to I'm going to start with this. But also um, for folks, just feel free to uh, drop those questions in the chat. Yeah, yeah, know. yeah. Drop them in the chat, and we'll Kevin's keep kind of keeping track for us, which is nice. So this is a little pumped up color from what I'm seeing, just knowing that I'm probably going to have a tendency to. Um, kind of tamp it down later. I like to start with the color being l brighter than I need it to be. Um,
So getting loose and abstract for me is always a, a continuum. And so when I'm working with a particular reference, I often will do this kind of thing, well, where I'm going to do a, a version of it that is tighter. It's I sort of get it out of my system, get that tightness out of my system. And then, um, and then I can get on to the business of what I really want to do. <laughs> so that's kind of how I view it oftentimes. If that makes sense. Get some of this grass going. And now that's pretty bright, but that's okay. That looks it's kind of good. Maybe a little much. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's right. Maybe that's. And then the sidewalk, I'm thinking. For that dappled light in here. And there's more that. Yeah, that's not that's not bad. Kind of buy that. There's the road. I'm not going to put the cars in today. I'm just lazy, lazy, lazy. And just some some idea of the structures over here. And yeah, so that starts to come together. That's a little the side of the tree. It's got some nice dappled light on it. And, and then there's some things to play with back in here. All right, maybe get down to the business of the tree a little bit more and what's behind the tree and the sky. So, I 
This is a little kind of grayed purple. Kind of see some of that back in here. And maybe I'm going to strengthen this a bit just because. Get a little bit of that dappled light on here and on its edges. And now for, let's see, I'm, I'm just going to play with this roof and this side of the house. Just kind of, I'm just going for a kind of a local color vibe on it just because. Oh, that little cypress thing isn't as tall as I had it. And oh, I need my, I need that spruce blue so bad. There it is. What else do I want to do over here? Maybe this, this tree is in the light. Maybe it's not quite that bright. This is something a little more neutral. But it's in the sunlight over here, so there's a couple more reaching back, and there's a little bit of idea of some dappled light, and there's some other opportunities to get some lights over here, a little fence line. Um, some light back in here. Some light back in there. There's the road where the car car is, but I'm not putting the car in. Where is the, there we go, this is the, this is the uh, art spectrum piece. I want to make sure I draw through because I'm messing that up. All right. Okay, so now definitely time for the sky, right? Because I've got a lot going on there. Um, oh, one other thing before I do the sky. One of, there's this nice light. There's a bush here that's in the sun. And there's some branches that are doing something like this. So that's neat. All right, sky. And it's pretty blue. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Again, just because I'm trying to stick a kind of an idea of it, it being and maybe it shifts a little bit lighter um, as it comes closer to the horizon. Let me get in here, carve out some the edge of the house. And then and then get over it. It's kind of denser over here. So just pick out a few little things. And
And then over here, there's a there's a rooftop, and you know, there's all kinds of fun things. There's a side the, the side of the house there. There's a uh, this roof feels like it's about like that. So there's you know kind of interesting color there. Now on those cherry blossoms, now I get to come in here and pick out some lights. On the cherry blossoms. Maybe a few more of this. So I would play with that. And I'm even going to let it come right across that because I think it will look good. Yeah. I'm going about this pretty fast. I, you know, if I was really serious about it, I'm not super serious about it today because I want to move on. Um, I could get in there and do, do some other types of things. Darks, and the blossoms get a little more fun texture and detail in these guys. But I think that gives a good sense of it. It's fun. Okay. As I'm, so um, I'll take some questions now um, as I switch to the next version, if, if there are any. Um, yeah. Um... Is it difficult to use Procreate? Um, I wouldn't say it's difficult. I, it's really fun. Um, no, uh, it's uh, you know it's helpful if you you uh, you know it doesn't. It's just another medium. It's it's another tool. It's not. It's not a. It's not. I've, I've had people say, oh, did, did that program do that? <laughs> no, the program didn't make the painting. So, right, so you still have to have this, the, the foundation of being able to draw and paint. There's no getting around that. It doesn't draw the head for you. Um, but it, 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 it does circumvent some of the difficulty of working with the like oil medium, you don't obviously you don't have to have it, it emulates pastel and oil paint and watercolor very well, but um, so you don't have to have all those things, and you can kind of bounce between different looks. Um, but in terms of it, um, the the actual program. No, it's no, it's really, really, it's it's super fun. Um, it's it's super super fun. I'm I really enjoy using it. Is it a um, um, is it a paid? Uh, yeah, but it's yeah, it is, but it's really not. I I, I we can look. Um, I I've had it for quite some time, so I honestly I forget how much it was. We'll look it up, but it. It's not an it's not a really super expensive deal. Um, oh, I know one thing I want to do in this because I, I had it in mind to do. I want to put that trash can in because I think it's so colorful and it looks good. <laughs> All right. Um, Nine ninety nine. That is a fabulous deal. Of course, you have to have. I think you can get. Bryce, does it say? Is it for tablet and iPad? I wonder if it is available because you you obviously have to have. Um, you know, I have the iPad. I, you know, we're just checking to see if it's available for. You have uh, the iPad Pro. I have the iPad Pro. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, another another question off the mm -hmm. iPad stuff mm -hmm. or off the Procreate stuff. Um, would you consider using a purplish stick?
Honestly, the spruce blue for me is, um, is habit. And so I have to break that habit, right? Yes, I, you know, and I'm going to. Um, and so, yeah, I, I've been starting to do different things. For instance, I've been playing with using charcoal instead of, instead of. And, and, and that's fine too. There, you know, there's tons of ways of, you know, because I, I use the, that spruce blue as sort of my, my sort of go-to starting point. But, you know, there are plenty of other ways of, of doing that. Okay, so let's get this. Let's move this out of the way. Hopefully we can kind of still have it in the frame so we can make some comparisons. And I kind of want to look at it as I, is that, is it still? The bottom of it. The, bo the bottom of it. Pardon? The bottom of it. We can zoom out just a little bit. Okay, cool. All right, I'm going to use a little bit different paper second time around. Still, it's still pastel matte. I'm just using scraps from my scrap drawer. I'm not, um, I haven't. Um, All right, let's just do that. Let's use charcoal instead. So this is a piece of vine charcoal. And so we'll get, just get in here. And now let's like look at this. So the main thing of this piece was is this is this uh, tree here, and it's got this kind of shape. And then maybe these, and then we've got stuff going on over here. Uh, maybe we could say that there's an, an angle here. Maybe you want to play with that a little bit. Could have some idea of these other little shapes in here. What else do we want? So I'm just like analyzing this. Do, do I want, do I still want this here? Maybe. I don't know. So abstracting is, a lot of it's, a process of simplifying. Um, there's that to it. You know, it still has some sort of, um, you know, recognition there of what the reference looks like. But now let's let's keep the whole thing a little simpler and just do something like this for fun. Um, let's still have that, uh, this dark. Let's still, so, so we're still kind of have some tree-ness to it. Definitely um, feels like tree. And that's not bad, but it's much simpler. Oh, I know. I have something fun that I forgot to say. We are going to have a visitor in the studio um, in a, in sooner than I think it's going to come up. Um, Tony Elaine is in town, going to be in Oregon City teaching a workshop. And he is going to come and visit uh, the studio after, after hours one night. So I'm really, really excited that he's coming. And we're just going to do like a little fireside chat. We're going to tape it. And um, we'll have that available for you guys to watch at some point. I'm not sure um, when we will um, release that, but Tony and I are kind of we're good, good uh, 
colleagues that kind of see eye to eye on a lot of things. So it's, you know, fun. So I'm interested to hear more about, I don't know a lot about his, his history about uh, pastel painting. Um, we met at IAPS uh, many years ago. So that's going to be super fun. So getting in here and maybe pumping up the color a little. So taking that idea, a lot of these ideas, and just pushing and pulling and simplifying. Maybe exaggerating. All right, let's get at that sky. Now, this would be a Tony Elaine move. He likes to make the skies really rich and dark. I see him do this all the time, and I think, wow, that is an amazing. He does such beautiful stuff. He's And talk about fast painters. He's really fast. into that sky, carving out some sky holes. And maybe um, getting some lights back here. I liked how I like how this has some lights back there. Maybe some, maybe still some lights on the on the tree, but maybe they maybe they're a little simpler. Now that's cool. Okay. Right. Okay. 
We still get some kind of quality of light, sort of. I think it getting in a little bit. And um, so I'm still, you know, I'm using some of the some of what I did initially. And I'm still preserving um, uh, an idea of where things are sitting in space. So I'm not really yet disturbing that too much. Um, okay, I want to get that roof. I'm going to put this in like so. Okay, so there's the next one. So, all right, we've got that. Should we take some questions? Sure. No? Do you put aside <laughs> the pastels that you use while you work? Pardon? Do you put aside the pastels that you yes, use? Yes, they're on my little, they're, my easel has a little shelf here and I have that shelf actually um, used, this is a Santa Fe 2 easel and so that shelf has two containers for brushes but I put a piece of foam core cut it to that size and put uh, uh, foam on it so um, we can show it later it's uh, it's really messy and dirty right now but all my pastels or that I use, that I've been using, are sitting there. So I have a working pile. And so I try very hard to refer to this working pile before I start adding. And in that way, I stay as limited as I can for as long as I can. When I look down here and like, okay, I need to go over here. I don't have what I need or want to do the job, then I'll dip into my larger palette, but I'm, I try to keep this, I try to keep it small. I try not to get too crazy, because the, the smaller you can keep that palette, the more harm, harmonious everything tends to be. Okay. Because then it, you uh, wipe them off and put them back. Yeah, I wipe them off. <laughs> That's one of my least favorite things to do. Uh, Kevin hears me moan and groan about that. I'm like, oh, I got, I, I used too many sticks on this piece. I gotta wipe all these off. Uh, yeah, I don't enjoy doing that part, but it's necessary because I do really believe that um, bringing a bit of organization and a bit of um, tidiness to the pastel painting helps you to improve because if you can't easily see what you, what you have to choose from or if it's all covered with gray dust because it's been sitting in your hand, um, then it's really hard to make good cho color choices. And that's one, another reason why I'm pretty fa fast. It speeds me up to have it organized and clean um, definitely speeds me up. If, if you're, you know, hunting all around or, you know, you're trying to figure out like you've got a big pile in your hand, you notice that I, I don't hold them in my hand. Once I'm done using that stick, I put it on that tray because if you let it roll around in your hand, it just gets to be one big, you know, gray pile in your hand. Okay, so now let's have some real fun. I'm ready for some real fun. Something crazy. Let's do something crazy. Let's 
So this is, this is where like all bets are off. You can do whatever you want. It doesn't matter. It doesn't even have to, it doesn't have to bear any relationship to the reference photo, though it would, you know, hopefully it, it might have some, because that's, you know, trying to, you know, use it to some degree. Right? What if it's just like, I love the color. What if, if it's more just taking this um, idea here? Um, um, Maybe there's just a, like a little bit of this purple or this. Oh, actually, I wanted to use this here. So I'm really getting abstract. So now I'm really just thinking about the the um, relationship of the the sizes of the cut blocks of color. Um, and now I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put in some blue. I'm gonna go for this maybe. Maybe more purple. Maybe there's more purple arching over here, it's pink. Maybe there's a teeny bit of this over here. No house, I don't want the house. <laughs> um, but what I do want, what I do want is the trash can. <laughs> there are those trash cans. Just look at that, that's neat. And maybe, maybe I want some Something like this. Build up some texture. And maybe. I don't know. Do I want, I, I don't know if I want any of that in there. Mm -mm. I'm gonna put it in just cause. Yeah, I, I'll go along with that. No, I'm trying to use the sticks that I have, have going here, but did you see that I'm tempted, I'm so tempted by another color. I'm really, really tempted. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. And so, and you know, I, I, I could bring it to a more of a landscape vibe if I wanted. I, I could start doing things like that. Scratch. And so now I'm see, see this is a, a new pastel. It's a, a harder stick. I could scratch into the layers 
and actually be um, subtracting Just kind of fun. So you know, then so you could take this in all kinds of places. But anyway, that's fun. <laughs> I had fun. So that's that's kind of th this one. I w I wouldn't want to do a whole lot more to it at, at this scale. I mean, you you could you could. You, if if I were working in by myself in the studio, I would have a tendency. I would I would I might take this outside and spray it because it would darken it and give me a chance to put more stuff on it. It would also give it a little texture to it. I might take you could take some alcohol to this and play play around, move some stuff around. Um, there's you, know, you could get some drips in here. All, all kinds of you know fun opportunities once you've got this kind of um, base. This one too, that you could do that too. And not to say that you couldn't do the same thing here, you could. Um, it's just really about where you want to go. Uh, for me, this, this is fine, it's nice, but um, to me, this is again, like I mentioned at the beginning of the demonstration, that oftentimes I'll start here with something just because I feel like I need to get it out of my system. Like, oh, I, I saw that, I want to paint it, and I'm going to do it. And then I'll do it again. The next version is going to be, a, you know, I'm going to take it in a, in a different place or in a different direction. Or perhaps use a different uh, set of materials with it. So, okay. Have some questions or yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm good. Goody. Um, can mm -hmm. you skip around? This is kind of a combination of two uh, two questions. Okay. In your in, in the year of the cloud, can you skip around if you want? Um okay. now that is it that oh, can I ask that again? Yeah. Uh, if you can um, in the monthly product, um, can you skip around if you want? If you buy the annual Membership that if you go yearly, you can skip around the whole shebang, the whole library. If you buy the monthly, then you get one month at a time, and you you can skip around. In once that month has been released for you, you can you can go back and forth. But it the 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 monthly works slightly differently. And any questions like that, if you're unsure about how the membership works, because I know I didn't, I haven't gone through exactly today, just contact um, Painting Lessons with, um, support at paintinglessonswithmarla.com, and they, um, they will answer your questions for you. They're really, really good. Support's super great. Great. So also, do you have this, um, this question is, this might seem silly, but do you have any printer recommendations? Printer recommendations. No, I really don't. That's what, you know. It's one of those things. Print, printer, uh, printers are so crazy. And the the thing that's, I what I have right now is a it it's just for um, for photos. It's not really meant for documents and whatnot. And because if I need lots of documents, I'll take it somewhere to get printed. And one thing I I have done is I, um, I it's a Canon printer, and I have recently purchased off-brand ink replacement and you know what's working like a charm it's fine and it's like a third of the cost so if whatever printer you do get I would look into that I would I would try that out because it's the ink not the printer that's expensive yeah. all right um, also um, do you have uh, recommendations for good substitutes for paper to practice on paper to practice on. Okay. There's so many great papers out there, and I know you're probably uh, trying to lessen the cost for practice. One thing I, I do firmly believe that whatever materials you're practicing on should be the materials that you're using for more finished pieces. 
And that's because the results are so wildly different. And then if you're practicing on like a sketch paper or a cans on paper and then expecting, um, you know, you're just not going to get the same result. So that being said, lately I have been using uh, Arches watercolor paper, Fabriano um, uh, uh, printmaking paper, and Reeves BFK. That paper, um, uh, inch per inch, is uh, quite a lot less expensive than a sanded paper. And I've been painting pastel direct, a lot of the animals that you see um, hanging in the studio are on those papers. And yeah, it doesn't grip quite as much, but they're perfectly wonderful, lovely papers to paint on. And the other thing that you can do with those papers is you can put a pastel ground on them. You can just paint the, that on and, and, and it'll give you a very similar feel to a, a, a pastel paper. But what I would say is whatever you're practicing on should be the thing that you're using for finished work. Anything else? Oh yeah, a few more if you'd like. Yeah. Um, we got a few minutes, sure. So um, let's see, let's get this one here. Um, what's your thought process when deciding whether a piece is done or not? Uh, is there a criteria that you've developed? This person feels that they've been overworking too much recently. Yeah, okay, yes. There, I feel like, yeah, I, I think over time there, there has been a thought process, and I actually have a little, I believe there's a mini lesson on that, knowing when you're finished, or determining when you're finished, because it is a big deal. Um, and I do think that on the whole, you know, students either, you know, you, well, you know, you either, you either know it's done, or you've, you haven't gone far enough, or you've gone too far, right? That's how it works. Um, a lot of times, if I am unsure whether it's that I'm, you know, I, oh, I, I uh, particularly, I try to, first of all, I try to stop myself from niggling, from picking on something. And if I find my attention drifting from a piece, I know it's time to stop. Because when your attention starts drifting, that's when you start just like, making marks to make marks and you're you don't know what you're doing you're 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 in a spot that you don't know how to resolve or whatever that's a time to stop so that's for sure then uh once i've stopped i try to get like you know, to give myself a break i try to go have a cup of coffee or tea or whatever have lunch and then come back in to the easel and get that quick glance at it, just that sidewise look at a piece. And that tells me a lot about whether I'm done or not. Also taking a photograph of it, because you're getting that different kind of, you know, look It's small. Usually you can see the larger shapes better. Um, you can see whether it's working as a unified whole. That's really the crux of what I'm looking for, is the piece looking as a unified whole. Now that doesn't mean that every single area has equal detail. That's not what I want, because if it, everything had equal detail, then it's just gonna look like a photo. I'm looking for the piece to have equal attention, like I paid attention to all the, the, the painting as a whole. So that picture plane, whatever that picture plane that I've determined, I paid attention to it. Um, but overworking, yeah, it's a thing, you know, that's, but if you can keep in mind like, oh, if I'm like getting bored or I don't know what I'm to do next, stop, stop right there and come back to it. Yeah. Cool. All right. Tell me one, one quick question. Yeah. Um, Will abstract be part of year four? 
No, not specifically. I really like that uh, mm -hmm. idea of abstracts, though. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe we'll do yeah. a whole... Uh, yeah. Whole, but whole year four thing. has plenty of opportunities for lots of exploration. And my intent is to be doing some, um, some of that alongside you. So There's a lot yeah. of different, different styles in yeah. year four, big yeah. time. Yeah, big time. Mm -hmm. But we don't specifically have a session that's abstracts. Yeah, OK. All righty. Um, yeah, but, but today and tomorrow are the last days of the sale that we're running on uh, monthly. So if you want to get in and get, get that front row seat for a year four, uh, now is the time. And we're really um, going to be showing little tidbits of what is in year four in the weeks to come. Okay. So we need to wrap up because we are doing our super stream in just about 45 minutes. And so those of you that are monthly members get to tune in for the, that second session and uh, critiques and all the rest. So I um, hope to see some of you there and the rest of you maybe next week. Uh, and um, have a lovely, lovely weekend. All right. Do we... Yeah, is that it? Okay. Bye now.